Wrestling fans, hello Friday. Welcome to another coronavirus-inspired Flashback Friday. Hope all is as well as can be expected wherever you may be. On a day that we were supposed to be Las Vegas-bound for the annual Cauliflower Alley Club reunion, we're stuck here uh, in a raw, chilly downtown Melrose, Massachusetts at MWF Studios, just a few blocks from our live event home of Memorial Hall. How are you holding up? Uh, Grateful not to have the corona, but suffering from a major CRPS attack in my right leg, leaving me barely able to walk, but still gimping into the studio to TCB. Happy birthday shout-out to my partner in crime, WWE Hall of Famer, Mr. USA, Tony Atlas, who actually wound up getting booked in New York today. Only Tony could get booked during a, a, a global shutdown due to this virus. How about that? The man's work ethic is second to none. Uh, We have three new podcast-style episodes of Wrestling Insiders with Tony available on our Facebook and YouTube channel right now. We're planning on recording more on Monday, which would likely be available to fans on Tuesday. If you have questions for Tony, uh, leave them in the comment section below or shoot us an email. Don't forget that Tony is available for cameo-style personal phone calls and can be commissioned for artwork to get him through this brutal time in his life with his wife hospitalized since last June uh, due to a stroke, losing her social security check and her work income. Now Tony finds himself losing dozens of personal appearances as well as his job as a fitness trainer. eBay links can be found below. We continue to go back in time to the good old days of professional wrestling with our daily New England wrestling history videos and fans enjoyed last week's Flashback Friday with Paul Orndorff so much we decided to do it again this week. We go into the Boston Wrestling Sports Archives and revisit a studio shoot interview with the original evil Doink the Clown in WWE, Matt Bourne. Could say a lot about Matt. Uh, he was a interesting character, but that is a different story for a different time. Fans, enjoy. Ha! <laughs> Y'all have never seen the Iron Sheik, don't we? Oh! <laughs> the Iron Sheik. When you, when you mention his name, I remember him... Okay, he was always like, okay, give me the gimmick, give me the gimmick. I remember going to Australia with him one time. Oh, and this is going to be a great follow-up because I hinted towards this last night. Okay, this was just on the trip over there. Okay. Right? So on the plane and, and I, you know what? It's a shoot interview, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I had a connection in, in L.A. Mm-hmm. So I get Fuji, I get all these guys, <laughs> cocaine, mm-hmm. you know. So yeah, everybody's got cocaine on the plane. But... Everybody's pretty much kayfabe in the cocaine, you know. If you're going to do a bump, you go in the toilet, you know. But there's the Iron Sheik sitting there like this, and he's, he's like this, looking around, <laughs> looking around. And then he goes, <laughs> you know, uh, kayfabe, make sure nobody's looking. And then s- sit up straight and snort it up, your, you know. No, we, he, he didn't want to get a kink in his airplane. neck or he something. He did this you know? on the plane? On the plane, seat? on the plane. Someone had told me a story, and I don't remember who it was, but he, him and Junkyard Dog <laughs> hid some rocks in the bottom of a bag of popcorn and snuck it on a plane. So that rhymes with just about what you're saying. Well, you know what he did one time going over the border into Canada to uh, Bob Orton? He uh, had cocaine, and he stuck it in Bob Orton's bag. <laughs> oh! I don't know if you ever heard about that. No, no, no please. Yeah, so they go through customs. And then he goes through, and he, then he wants to, Bob Orton's bag. What do you want in my bag? Oh, no, I put something in there. He pulls out for a uh, half ounce of cocaine. Bob Orton gets busted with that stuff. Ooh. The sheik put he didn't even know he had it. Now, that's bullshit. Wow. Uh, John Noidham <laughs> has had a similar experience when he was doing the Colonel Mustafa thing in 92. He, he's had a tough time getting through customs, wow. so I guess he just deposits it where he deposits it. Oh, yeah. Oh, now, yeah. now, he told us the story, I believe, I think it was Australia or New Zealand. He said, you two shared a room together. Australia. Yeah, and you brought back a, a female friend to the room to do the deed. And he woke up the next morning, and all the money from his wallet was stolen. No, here's the story. All right, let's hear it. We're partying in Sydney, Australia, at King's Cross, right? And I'm <sighs> the unlucky guy that's got to share the room with the Iron Sheik, oh, you know. I, I uh, actually had to do that once, too, and it was... Yeah, yeah. But, you know, thank God Morocco was over there. So I party with Morocco all the mm-hmm. time, you know. And uh, So we're down at King's Cross. We're hitting all the bars. And, uh, yeah, I picked up this chick. 
at King's Cross. And uh, I go back to the hotel. Now, Sheik's not even there, right? Mm. This is 1, 2 in the morning. So I go into my hotel room with this chick, and uh, we're in bed. I'm in bed with this chick. And uh, half hour, 45 minutes later, the Sheik walks in. <laughs> and, and, oh, Matt, Matt Bourne, you bring woman for the Sheiky baby. Instantly. <laughs> I can hear him saying I'm under the covers. He strips naked. <laughs> She doesn't know the Sheik. She doesn't know. She's not even a wrestling fan, you know? She was just some chick that was partying, you know? And so, and so, so, no, no, no. You see Sheiky now? I can okay. see that. You know, that's, that's just normal Sheik stuff. But he gets normal naked. Sheik stuff. And then he grabs his unit, and, he's, and he walks right over, you know? And, uh, and he's whipping it around, and he's showing it to her. Okay, when you get through with the matzo born, maybe you take care of the shiki. And he's shaking his stuff right over my right shoulder. You know? My left shoulder, excuse me. Now, now this chick is like hiding. Oh my God, and, and, I, and I, she's shaking too. I would trembling. imagine so when you see the sheik. And you know what, uh, I'm just trying to avoid any drippage or anything. You know? <laughs> And, you know, what am I going to say? Ah, yeah, leave us. Stop, stop, stop. <laughs> ah, Matt, one, you share. You, we the boys, you share. You bring women in here, you share with all, all the boys, you know. I mean, I was younger in the business. You know, I'd been in the business five, six years. And, and uh, what the chic, you know, he was such a dick. And uh, so he ends up going Literally. to sleep. <laughs> Literally, yeah. <laughs> so he ends up going to sleep. And some of a bitch snores like, you know, he must have had sleep apnea or something. You know, that's the walls had to have been breathing, you know. <laughs> so anyway, this, this woman gets up and leaves. You know, the sun's coming up, right? She gets up and leaves. I am half asleep. I sense her getting up and leaves. See you later. Never saw her again, you know. Da, da. I go back to sleep, so I wake up. <laughs> And I leave, because the next day we're leaving. Mm -hmm. We're going to Adelaide or Perth, you know, we're catching a plane. So I'm down in the lobby, and the sheet comes down and is raising hell. Oh, oh all my money in my wallet is gone, you know? Now, if this woman got in his pants that were wherever they were and stole his, after he did what he did, you know, she must have had a set of balls on her, you know, because she was scared to death. Yeah. I believe in my heart that he has made that shit up just because I didn't freaking say, hey, I'll take care of my buddy out. here, you know. Yeah. Um, I wasn't going to do that. But he made the biggest scene in the lobby. I've, we and talked about motel, hotel, lobby scenes yesterday, too. Yeah, and it was, that. Uh, <laughs> it was ridiculous, you know. And, uh, and he, you know, that was just one of the times, you know, I'd be... <laughs> I'd be in Atlanta with them, and I'd be going home to Portland, and, you know, everybody knows that the Northwest grows the best marijuana in the world, you know, and, uh, <laughs> and I was a good connoisseur of it, and the chic, I'd be going to Portland. Ah, oh, Matt DeBorn, I see you next week. You going home, huh? Maybe you bring Sheiky back and out, you know. How much? I don't know, Sheik. You know, if I bring some back, I'll, you know, I'll hook you up. And uh, so, okay, okay, okay. So I'd see him. Oh, you bring my you bring my smoke. Oh man, I'm sorry, man. I didn't. Oh, I gave you fifty dollars. You don't. And he said, Oh, Matt Bourne. He I give him fifty dollars to bring me the good smoke, and he brings me nothing. You know, he never gave me fifty dollars. I cheeky. never told him yeah, I was going to bring him smoke. If I have some, I'll give it to you. You know, I mean, and I had to deal with this shit all the time with him. Every time I saw him, he was always being a dick. You know, always being a dick. And to show you, let me, let me just tell you this story. You're not even asking me this question. Wow. It was Ole Anderson was booking for WCW. And this was in 1982. Rick Rude was just breaking in. Mm -hmm. Hadn't broken in yet. And there was this guy that came in that had a phenomenal body, very well-spoken, and very humble. Wanted to be a wrestler. And he could have been a superstar. He had everything it took. He had the body, he had the athletic background, and he had the attitude 
of a respectable young man that was showing respect and wanted to learn. Ole Anderson had this attitude, right? you know. Ole Anderson and I never saw things eye to eye either. I always saw him as a prima donna guy. I always thought he was a tough guy and would beat somebody up if he had a chance. So the Iron Sheik's there. I'm there and Buzz Sawyer's there, which Buzz Sawyer is one of the best shooters I've ever known in my life. So the Sheik gets in the ring with this guy, and Ole wants the Sheik to beat him up, Ugh. right? Now, this is 82. Sheik was still young and stuff. So they get in the ring. And this young guy ankle picks the sheik and puts him on his ass. Really? Yeah. Not once, twice. Oh, not good. The sheik doesn't like so, that. So Buzz and I are standing there, and Buzz is shaking his head. Buzz is shaking his head, and Buzz said, "Get out of there, sheik." <laughs> so Buzz gets in there, and Buzz not beats him up. You know, Buzz beats him up. So Buzz beats him up, and then the sheik gets back in there and beats him up more after Buzz already blew the guy up. And the guy's, you know, bloodied. Ugh. So the sheik gets in there and puts the boots to him and stuff. I think he even tried to load his boot, too. You know? <laughs> <laughs> no. But anyway, so after that, the guy's bloodied, beat up, tired. Ole Anderson gets in there and wants to be a tough guy and beats him up. From that point on, every time I looked in Ole Anderson's eyes, I looked at him like, you piece of shit. And Ole Anderson wants to think that he's the great mind of the business and was, in his young day was a tough guy. Ole Anderson have that much respect for him. Really? Yes. Hope you enjoyed that, fans. Please like, share, and subscribe so we can continue to bring you more great wrestling content. Again, at least until our studio shuts down, hopefully not. Check out our daily New England wrestling history videos. Our Tony Atlas Wrestling Insiders podcast and join the Patreon channel for just a couple bucks a month. You can keep wrestling legends working while enjoying full screen ad free studio shoot interviews and DVDs. We'll be back next week with another Flashback Friday. Until we speak again, you and yours be well, stay healthy.